You do not have what you want because you do not ask. Is that true? This scripture in James 4 is talking about prayerlessness. My name is Titi Lolaudude. I serve in the prayer ministry at Bethel Community Church. This afternoon, I'd like to talk to us about prayerlessness. You know, God knows us so well. From verse 1, he talks about our dissatisfaction with life and how it leads us to a lot of strife. And I'm thinking, wow, he's got my number. Because it's true. I was very dissatisfied with my life. And instead of talk to God about it, I was pretty much getting into conflict right, left and center. Finally, I settled for the fact that I'm just an angry person. Can you relate to that? Some of you may not be as outspoken as I am, but the conflict is deep on the inside of you, right inside your heart. You wouldn't say a word, nobody could tell to look at you, but you would probably label yourself as depressed. Well, God sees all. Those of us who are shouting it out and those of us who are holding it in. He says, I know about all your conflicts, but having conflict on the inside, but not talking to God about it, is still called prayerlessness. I have to say that um, while I struggled um, with all these conflicts, I threw a few prayers up. Most of my prayers were more like, God, can you just deal with this situation that is getting on my nerves? Hindsight is 2020. I'll have to say that those prayers were very selfish. It was all about my comfort and my discomfort. And I really didn't care about the people I was praying for or about, about what God has to say about anything. In verse 3, God says, when you ask, you ask with wrong motives. Even when you finally come to ask, you ask with the wrong motives. And so you cannot have what you ask for. I think that's in chapter 3. You only want what you want. The whole motive is wrong. So you still don't get any answers. And I didn't. And you know, after you prayed a couple of times like that, and you get no answers, you start to think, mm, I don't know, prayer is not for me. I, I'll, just, I'll just handle things myself. I'll do the best I know how. You know what God calls that? God calls that pride. In verse 6, he says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Pride? Yes. I was so full of my own opinions, what I wanted God to do, even when I asked him, I knew exactly what I needed him to do. I wasn't asking for his opinion. I didn't care about God's opinion. Frankly, I couldn't begin to humble myself. Why? Because I didn't even know what God had to say about anything. You know, if you're going to humble yourself, that would mean that you want to agree with him about what he says. So, studying the word of God was my first step towards humility. Away from pride towards humility. Because God says he opposes the proud. So, knowing that, learning that, I had to now start to learn what God has to say about different things. My Bible was a good one. It's called Life Application Bible. I had a shop in those days, and I was in conflict with the girl that worked with me. So I kind of went into the Bible to see what does God have to say about employees and employers. And oh my God, he does have a, he has a solution. He has an opinion and all I'm going to have to learn to do is agree with him. So for all the while that I had been praying about that situation, I didn't pray for God's will. I didn't know God had an opinion. So it was a 
good eye-opener. And soon, I was always in the Bible. What does God have to say about relationships? What does God have to say about finances? What does God have to say about all these different things? And I found myself not where I needed to be. I, if I'm going to walk in humility, need to agree with God. Not just know what he says, but agree with him and then do what he says. What that means is that my whole lifestyle must cooperate with my prayers. I must be praying what God wants and yield my life to, to that. So, prayer is not just for what you can get from God. Not like an ATM card, you just swipe it and get some money. No, it's about getting to know him having his heart on different matters. Once you have his heart, your, your life changes. Your prayer even changes. You start to pray, let your will be done, Lord. I want you to have your way in my husband's life or my daughter's life or in my son's life or in my boss's life. I want you to have your way in my nation. I want you to have your way, God. My prayers are now cooperating with God to see his kingdom come and his will being done. So prayer is going to help you to get to know God. And so I want to encourage those of you who have given up on prayer, like I did too in the past, and just say, well, you know what, my prayers aren't working. Maybe he has some faithful people. I want to encourage you to start again. I also want to encourage you to connect with us at prayer at BethelWPG.com. You can join us for a prayer we meet on Zoom. We would love to pray with you and would like to pray for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you do not condemn us, that you see us as we struggle with not being able to pray properly, and you desire to help us, Lord. I pray in this season that you will draw us close to you, that we will be willing to get to know you, not just for what we can get from you, but to really know what is on your heart. I pray, Father, you would give us the hunger to search your word and study your word, to be able to recognize your voice, to want to know what your will is in every situation that we're praying for. Father, forgive us for our pride, all our opinions. Lord, the kingdom is yours and the power is yours. Help us to be ones that are able to Hear what you desire in all the circumstances that we face so that we can just pray for that. Lord, we want to be ones that are going forth in your name, praying for your will to be done in situations and circumstances. Help us, Lord, to live a humble life before you and you will receive all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, I'm so glad for this opportunity to share what was on my heart today with you. And I hope that your prayer life is going to receive um, a, a new boost. That you start to see changes as you continue to press into the Lord. So, until next time, stay blessed.